know when you're assigned like a talk in church and you think I, this topic was probably for me? I think this topic is probably for me. Most women are pretty comfy in the comfort zone. We like routine. We're good with a happy hum. But my next guest says, if you want to edge up your relationships, your friendships, or your life, you'll do a brave thing. This could be a new challenge, like a job or a hobby, or just a subtle self push towards something different to mix it up. There are a lot of benefits that come out from trying new adventures and daring to put yourself out there. Studio 5 contributor Kelly Jensen is our favorite girlfriend. Today she's kind of our coach too. She has a pep talk to help us be more brave. You want us to get uncomfortable. I do. I think it's good to be uncomfortable and women are inherently brave. I mean, look at you. You're about to step into one of the bravest things in the world. And so I think a good re intentional reminder is a good thing. You think we're inherently brave. I do. I don't feel that way. <gasps> I feel like, and, and some of that, I mean, yeah, every life situation and story is going to be different, but mine's been pretty patterned okay. and pretty consistent. And so the idea of being brave feels like something so out of my path. This is for you then, because I feel like sometimes we don't recognize the best qualities in ourselves, and there is no doubt that every woman on earth is brave to me. I, I know that. that. Mm. I love that. All right. Uh, the obvious way to be brave is to try new things mm. and adventures that scare you. And you lean into this one specifically. I do. I think it's the same thing as some people cold plunge. I like to do adventurous things. It makes me, oh, thank you. That's good. Little hair touch. Um, it makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like I'm in control of my life. The thing about doing brave things is when you're uncomfortable and you get through them, it builds confidence. It's what we're trying to do for our kids. What have you done to check this box? <laughs> what haven't you done? I've honestly done about everything. I've skydived, I've paraglide, hang glide, I've swam with sharks, I've done all these crazy <laughs> jumping off bridges things. But not just that, I mean, I really try to push myself in all ways because I want to know that whatever happens in my life that I can tackle it. And I want to have physical reminders of that. I have done this. I have gone through this. This too shall pass. Everything will be okay. I, I love that about being brave. Do you do it for yourself or do you do it more for your kids? I know that's important to you too, to see mom do big things. It's very important for me to model for my kids because I ask a lot of them when I sign them up for a new class or I ask them to start a new sport or get a new skill. So I do do it for my kids. I think it started out for me to try to to create an interesting life, a life that I was proud of, a life that I could look back on and tell stories about. So I think it started like that, but as you have kids, everything shifts yeah. and you start to think, what do I want for them? And you start to see them struggle through anxieties or worrying about starting an, a new adventure. And you think, well, if I'm asking them to be brave, yeah. let me be brave too. And Mark was always good, it seems, to meet you there. He was. He is a feet on the ground. I will watch you. I will, you know, <laughs> I will pay for it. I will okay. sign you up. But <laughs> lately, he's been a little more brave. I think he's tackled a few things in his life yes. where he feels like, hey, I'm, I want to live this life. Yeah. Our good friend of the show, Maria Eckersley, has a phrase that stuck with me probably again because I need to memorize it, live it, embrace mm -hmm. it. But she believes comfort lies two steps outside your comfort zone. Like you can go one step, but then if you can take that extra edge, that's where you'll find, I'm sorry, adventure. Adventure lies two steps out of your comfort zone. I don't know if I said that correctly, but that's where the adventure is. I think that's perfect because you can step, like you say, a step out and be like, yeah. oh, this is yeah. hard for me. But when you're on the edge of something, you're like, I, I am not sure I can make this happen. And you yeah. do it anyway. What does that tell yourself and your body and your brain about the next time something comes, which it will for us, and you think, I really don't think I can do this. And you say, I have done this before. I have felt this feeling before, and I have conquered it. I'm sort of already feeling it. What, are, what are we doing for Let's lunch do it. today? Let's do what, where are we going? <laughs> what bridge are we jumping off with parachute attached? OK, this next one, another component. Yeah. Um, do things that make you look silly. You, mm -hmm. want, you think bravery also encompasses not caring what other mm -hmm. people think. And I think my children have taught me this because as they hold themselves back like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I don't want, and you see that, that the awkwardness that that creates in everyone around them and themselves, instead of just stepping into it, laughing at yourself, not taking things so seriously. That's what I want in life. And so 
I am the worst at this. I don't like to karaoke. I don't like to like do things that I'm gonna, <laughs> but then you just say, what do I want for my kids? Let me try that new VR. Let me step into this freezing ice cold <laughs> <laughs> cryotherapy. What is that? <laughs> and it shocks your system and it, it, it it creates so many health benefits. Honestly, courage in itself is psychological, it's physical, it creates an induced immunity. Um, it's really a okay, fantastic thing. So what do you tell yourself in the moment before you pick up the karaoke mic, before you strap on this VR headset knowing there are phones out and cameras rolling, do you tell yourself anything to like get outside of Kelly? I say, who do I want to be? Okay. Do I want to be the person who's scared, who takes life too seriously? Do I want to live it and have adventures and show my kids what they're capable of? Who do I want to be? And honestly, I don't want to be the person that runs the marathon. And I don't love to cold plunge. <laughs> so it has to align with your values. Yeah. To watch a horror movie or jump off a bridge just because somebody else is doing it will never satisfy that part of you. Mm. You have to say, what do I find value That's in? That's good. Yeah. That's really good, because I'm not in the marathon right. club either. And, it, and that's the beauty of all the adventure out there, is yeah. that we can pick and choose what aligns with us. If you watch someone skydive and you think, oh my gosh, could I do that? That tells you, yes, like push yourself to do something like that. But if you look and say, that person is an idiot, then you're like, no, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Said with love, of course. This next one, I, I, I sort of have a love relationship, love-hate relationship with the idea of, of failure holding us back. Because sometimes I don't think, we say this, we toss it around, sometimes I don't think we honestly go far enough to even anticipate the success or the failure. We just mm -hmm. stop ourselves short. But for the brave brain that does extend at least to the idea, sometimes you say failure Failure is the door that slams shut. I think we should see thing, see failure not as a destination, okay. but as a stepping stone. It's what I tell my kids. Love. If you're not Love. failing, you're not growing. Failure is just an a, a opportunity to gather information about how to do it next or which way to turn. If we're not pushing ourselves to the place where we're not doing it well, then where are we going? Like when you learn to walk, when you learn to do any skill, you're failing at that every time mm -hmm. until you're not. Mm -hmm. And so I tell my kids like, let's fail, let's do these things where we aren't able to do it. And then that will tell us, do we like this? Is this something we wanna keep going? So instead of a destination as failure, think of it like, what can I do to grow? And what is, where's this path taking me? So you'll lean even if you know for the most part, mm -hmm. that failure is a certainty. Well, in what in what instance is failure a certainty? I don't think mm -hmm. that it ever is. Like, because anything that you do, if I'm going to push myself to uh, jump off a bridge bungee jumping, and I think like, there's a possibility that I can't do this. In my brain, because I have done so many adventurous things and I have confidence in myself, I honestly think it takes just as much courage to know my limit and walk down from that platform yeah. after I've paid for it as it is to jump off the bridge. And both those things gather this information that I am in control of my life mm. and I am doing what I want to do. Life is not driving me, I am driving my life. And that breathes opportunity, confidence, and also, um, you know, a pathway for our children. You know what? A lot of women can live with their heart outside. Your passion, though, is mm. all over the floor, <laughs> and we love that about you. Thanks. Heart and passion. Thank you so much. Yeah. There you go. Be brave. Try something new. I think we're all thinking now. I'm seriously feeling like a little tick. We like, can this do is, it. Okay. It will help. Best cheerleader we know. We love you, <laughs> Kelly Jensen. Thank you.